Hey guys, Chris here with the Good Old Gamer. So today we're going to talk about what I believe is the biggest news to come out here recently. And it's not Ampere, it's not Big Navi, nothing to do with the next consoles. Instead, to me, the biggest news to come up is NVIDIA looking to buy ARM. And what this means for the entire PC and pretty much electronics landscape out there across the world over the next coming years if this deal goes through. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. Before we get into that, if you guys like to help support the channel, as you can see, got some merch. We have Teespring right in the description below if you wanna pick up some TGOG merch yourself. Really does help support the channel and I really thank everybody that goes ahead and supports. All right, so before we really get into this, what we really need to establish is kind of the setting, the situation that we find ourselves in right here and now. This is a different point in time than I think anybody would have predicted. And realistically, it all starts with Intel. Another big piece of news that came out here recently is the fact that Intel is struggling with their seven nanometer process. This isn't really news. They've had a lot of problems with their 10 nanometer process, but they officially came out and said, yeah, it's probably not gonna be ready until 2022 or 2023. And honestly, with the way things have been going, 2023 seems more likely. And this really puts Intel in a very awkward spot. And in reality, this puts x86 as a whole in kind of a dire position, which it hasn't been in my entire lifespan. If you guys are unfamiliar, x86 is basically just a big phrase that we use for the current PC architecture that we use, even though it's technically using the AMD 64 extension with 64-bit operating systems we're using, but we still attribute the entire architecture to Intel's x86. Came out a long time ago, like I said, maybe when I was a kid. Uh, I believe it actually came out in 1986, if memory serves me right, so I was really, really little. But pretty much ever since then, Intel's been in the driver's seat for PC electronics, at least for things like desktops and laptops, and even things like game consoles, especially the newer ones. They're all using x86-based processors this generation, next generation, and the original Xbox also did. Now, with Intel basically losing ground, they're basically non-existent re in reality. Nobody's looking at their products anymore. AMD has filled the gap, but this shows to the world that x86 is vulnerable pretty much for the first time since I can remember. And a lot of people are looking for alternate solutions. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, Apple's already switched over. They've already switched over to ARM, their custom ARM solutions completely. They've gotten off of x86. They went from PowerPC, I think that was in the late 2000s, uh, or early 2000s, I mean, and then they switched over to x86, and now they're switching over to ARM. Microsoft is also looking to switch to ARM. So NVIDIA buying up ARM basically means they're gonna be at the forefront of where both Sony and, or not Sony, but Apple and Microsoft seem to be heading anyway. Now, let's bring it all back to gaming. Like, how does this relate to us? Well, it's not going to affect you or I anytime soon. This is just the beginning of a long-term solution. Actually, Tom and I, on one of his uh, Broken Silicon podcasts, we actually surmised that NVIDIA would make a really great Apple-like company where they can make their own products, have their own ecosystem, because they have a lot of moving parts that could work together. And I think as a company, they'd be pretty good at that. And honestly, this would be one of the biggest steps to jump into that. We know that ARM devices already pretty much make up the vast majority of the mobile market. So this is something that NVIDIA would automatically just right off the jump be embedded in. Now there's a lot of different companies making different ARM-based CPUs and APUs. Let's just call them APUs because they do have graphics on there. And obviously with NVIDIA, they're already really good at graphics. So they're going to want to start implementing their own graphics solution into this. So that's one of the big key areas where they themselves could enhance ARM pretty dramatically straight from day one. But 
that's a huge market that they're just going to have. A lot of people are actually moving away from desktops and laptops and tablets, as seen by this graph right here. That seems to be the trend moving forward. Now, this isn't gonna mean that ARM and mobile phones and everything are going to take over the whole planet and be the only device that you need, no. But what it does mean is that that's a huge install base for these new APUs to be getting into. And I believe Nvidia, like I said, with their upgraded graphics, will be able to deliver really excellent performance and a certain level of ecosystem that we just kind of don't see right now. For example, the best example of this would be something like the Nintendo Switch, which already uses an ARM-based or four ARM-based CPU cores and an NVIDIA Maxwell-based GPU. This is on their uh, Tegra X1 chip, and this is a five-year-old chip at this point, came out in 2015. And this thing is still able to play modern day games, although really, really stripped down. It's actually really amazing what NVIDIA and Nintendo have been able to do with optimizing software on basically bare bones, seven and a half watt APUs. It's just crazy to see. So imagine this just scaled up in the future. You have much more powerful CPU cores, much more powerful GPU cores with greater architecture and can still stay in that really low power envelope. So to me, it wouldn't be out of this world to start seeing cell phones basically having all the capabilities or actually superior capabilities to that of something like a Nintendo Switch, which basically would take that out of the market because nobody would need to buy a Nintendo version of something that they already own. Like I said, everybody already has a cell phone. So this is a really easy way for Nvidia to go ahead and basically take over that particular market. Now it's not that difficult to just imagine scaling this up even further. Instead of four cores, go to eight cores or maybe 16 CPU cores with larger GPUs. This could be a real threat to the next generation of consoles, something like the PS6 and whatever they call the next Xbox. Is it not possible that by that time, so seven or eight years from now, Nvidia could have a real solution that could compete against anything that AMD could produce on x86? So to me, this is another area that NVIDIA could completely take over if they do purchase ARM. It's at least a possibility, a real possibility. And then of course, on the desktop side, NVIDIA can't produce x86 CPUs. They can't, this is really their weakness. So the smart move would be is to actually push Apple and especially Microsoft to really start adopting ARM even further. NVIDIA could start making their own machines, their own like pre-built PCs. Think of something like the uh, NVIDIA Shield TV, just like a little set-top box. They could do those really, really cheap and then have developers start building the software catalog for something like that. Then over time, once the catalog is big enough to where the average user can use whatever applications they want, which most people already can here today, but Let's just say even for some of those staunch people out there like, no, nah, I need this, that, or the other thing. Eventually, they can get those apps ported over to ARM. And then at that point, NVIDIA could start producing full-fledged desktop-style CPUs under the ARM architecture. Is this not possible? It absolutely is. They could go ahead and have APUs rival or possibly even be superior to something that AMD currently has. And as much as... I hate to admit it, the closed system nature of NVIDIA basically having their own CPU architecture and their GPU architecture, and like I said, creating their own ecosystem, it is theoretically possible that they could optimize the software even better on their platforms. In short, I believe that N NVIDIA with ARM could be a viable alternative to current x86 CPUs in the not too distant future because of this. And they are a major company. This is one of the biggest things. This is another big piece of news. Looking at Nvidia stock, they have actually overtaken Intel. Of the three major companies that we talk about on this channel, Intel used to be like light years beyond both AMD and Nvidia. But due to Nvidia's rise in their stock price, a lot of it has to do with the potential purchase of ARM. That does have to be said but it's doubled since the beginning of the year. Their stock price has doubled. 
And it was already pretty high at about $250. And they're about at $500 per share. It's pretty crazy. But the net worth of NVIDIA, the company, is actually more valuable today than Intel is. And Intel is going to continue to slide down. And NVIDIA seems to be on a start trajectory up. Which means in this particular space, even right now, even without ARM, they are a dominant force that could push these things. So... With that in mind, is it not possible that if they do purchase ARM and start developing, like I said, desktop class CPUs, laptop class CPUs, which I'm sure that'll come well before desktop, it seems very likely that these CPUs would be adopted by all the major platforms out there. Like I said, Microsoft's already looking at it, Apple's already all in, and the cell phones are already there. The only real holdouts at this point in time are mainstream desktop, and the consoles, and that's about it. And eventually, like I said, that could be easy to overcome. The server side, ARM already has their kind of server stuff going on. It's kind of hit and miss. But with all of the optimization and performance engineers that they have at NVIDIA, no matter what you have to say about the company, they're very good at extracting maximum performance with whatever they're working with. So you add that on top of the great ARM engineers, do you not think it's possible that NVIDIA could accelerate the performance of the ARM architecture and make it more viable even in the server market over the next 10 to 20 years? I absolutely think it is possible. So that's the reason why I did kind of the Lord of the Rings thing and the one to rule them all. Because if NVIDIA, like I said, right now, the largest of the semiconductor manufacturers out there in the world right now, they're number one. And they don't even own a fab, they, but they are the most valuable company. If they go ahead and put the full force behind this, they really could take over literally every market from mobile phones, laptops, desktops, consoles, servers, workstations. They're already in most of these things with discrete graphics cards already. And not to say that they wouldn't continue to produce high performance discrete graphics cards. Of course they would. There's no way you're going to be able to fit, you know, an 850 millimeter squared uh, GPU on an APU. But for us users, I think that they would go kind of a similar approach that we currently have. You'd have APUs with high core count, something like what Intel has. The GPUs kind of is what it is. It's more meant for mobile. Uh, they might just cut out the GPU, kind of like what AMD currently does. Not really sure what solutions they might have, but to me, it seems very likely that they would go ahead and tackle those markets after purchasing ARM. To me, this is huge news, and this means that it's going to take a long time to implement these kind of things. I believe, obviously, the phone market's ready for it, but I think the laptop market would be first to really adapt these if you get really high-performance APUs out there at a low cost. And NVIDIA, to break into these markets obviously wouldn't have a problem going ahead with low cost APUs to go ahead and basically snag that entire market away from x86. Eventually, if it gets to the point where software is written for ARM first and then ported to x86 second, that's when you know for sure that ARM and NVIDIA at that particular point, they are now completely in com control of the entire market. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going, wow, this is really, really bad. This is, I hope this doesn't happen. There are benefits to this, meaning software that runs on your desktop could run on your laptop, which you can now, but then it could also run on something like your smartphone because they're basically going to all be based on the same architecture and have similar hardware in them. I think that this would be pretty cool. So this way you don't have to buy things like three times, two or three times, depending on what device you're using. Across all your devices, software should be able to move as long as you're using some sort of operating system that's relatively similar. At least the base underlying architecture of the systems would be the same. So this could lead to cost savings for individuals. Buy it once, use it on all your platforms. There could be cool incentives like that. So it's not all doom and gloom here. And in reality, I think it's going to be really interesting. It will throw in more competition in the market. If you guys look at AMD, they're basically strutting around like they're invincible because Intel literally is nowhere to be found. And honestly, if they fall behind on their 7 nanometer, if basically TSMC has their 3 nanometer out by the time they hit their 7 nanometer, Intel's done and they will never, ever come back. And we will need this level of competition 
The crazy part is, is it's going to be two different platforms and they're not going to be compatible, which is going to be a little strange. This is going to be different than anything we've ever seen before. Your software won't transfer over and it won't work the same. And that's going to be a little weird unless they get some sort of x86 emulation going that that actually works and works well, which Windows already has up and running, but it's not the best. Perhaps that's something that NVIDIA, you know, their engineers could work with them and get that running better. Who knows? But or at that point, maybe the technology would be so fast that legacy x86 stuff. So stuff coming out today might be considered legacy, you know, five, 10 years from now, and it could just brute force its way through. I don't know, but this is an interesting future. This is something that Celso over at Cortex, he was talking about a while ago, ARM really taking over. A lot of the guys out there, they believe that Risk v Celso also talked about that, will be the next thing. But trust me, if NVIDIA buys ARM, NVIDIA has the clout, the money, and the stature that they could push this out there much, much harder than anybody has ever seen. And like I said, with Apple already pushing it and Microsoft already pushing it, it's really not gonna be that hard for them. The work is already being done. The groundwork is being laid by these other mega companies. And if Nvidia wanted to, once they have CPU technology, like I said, if they wanna build their own ecosystem, they could build their own smartphones. They could build their own laptops. They could build their own desktops, their own gaming consoles something similar, like I said, to the NVIDIA Shield TV, except it could be more fully fledged out. They could build their own Linux operating system, maybe build their own operating system from the ground up. I don't know which way they'd go, but they could build their own system there and they could be very Apple-like like that, or they could continue, and I believe that they would, continue to license out their technology because then they make money when everybody else sells stuff. Every time Apple sells a product, or Samsung, or any of those guys, they make more money, and that's just gonna give them even more fuel to this mega system that they are starting to build. This I did not see coming. Uh, Tom and I, like I said, when we were talking about it, we figured that they would utilize ARM. I never thought that they would just go out and buy it. And since they're in the pole position to do that, like I said, this is pretty nuts, and I would say unprecedented. So. I'm really interested to see what happens here. I'm really excited to see what sort of performance they could extract out of much better APUs, very low power APUs. The Nintendo Switch has very much impressed me over the years, getting games like Witcher 3 and Doom, and they're getting Doom Eternal to run on the thing. Like I said, it's using a 2015 really low powered APU to run these games, even though, like I said, they don't run very well. Just imagine using 2020 technology, how well these things could go on a seven and a half watt APU. Now, granted, that's with the newer revision, used to be 15 watts, but still very, very low power. And what they could do scaling this thing up, I'm really interested to see. And before we go, I have a little announcement for you. On September 1st, for the Ampere reveal, I will be doing a live stream with Celso from Cortex. He will be joining me. So you guys are welcome to join. That'll be here on YouTube. That'll be starting a half hour before the event and we'll go, I don't know, half hour or an hour afterwards. So we will watch the event live with you guys and you can get our thoughts and reactions in real time. So don't miss that. Um, I'll go ahead and make sure to throw up like a community post and you guys will be kept informed there. So yeah, that's getting, I'm really excited. I haven't done one of these like live stream event things. Celso said, hey, let's, let's go ahead and do it. So you guys are all welcome to join there. It'll be September 1st. We will start at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's 10.30 my time. And you got to kind of figure it out from, from the 11.30 a.m. Every time zone's different. But we'll be here and there'll be, you know, stuff on YouTube letting you know you know, how many hours ahead of time it's going to be and stuff like that. So just September 1st, keep your eyes open for that. Look forward to seeing you all there. And of course, as always, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. And as far as the merch goes, links are in the description below. You can rock your own TGOG t-shirt. We have hoodies, all that cool stuff. Go ahead and check that out. That really does help support the channel. Thank you so much for that. And that's all I have for today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.